like to show you how to program a uh, five axis part from a 3D step or IGES file. Uh, to do that, you go to the, uh, the CAM tab here in iGEMS and click on this uh, 3D 5X button, and that'll bring you into this screen here. You can then click on the open icon and open up uh, your file. So we've got some different uh, step and IGES files here. So that's the part that we want to cut. Right now, the way it was drawn, it's on edge. Um, so we'd probably prefer to cut this with uh, this side here down to the table. So there's this button here where you can align a uh, surface to, uh, to the table. So you can click on surface and then click on what we want down on the table. And that'll lay that flat on the table now. And then if you want, you can also um, use this um, rotate command to spin the part around the uh, axis. So if we wanted to rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis, around the z-axis we can. And then what we can do at this point is uh, pick either surfaces or edges to indicate where the stream is going to project through the part, through the material. Um, so basically what we can do is tell it that this is one surface or we can specify these edges either way. And then we'll specify this edge down here um, to go, basically then we'll connect those um, two surfaces for this um, projection of the stream. So to do that, go to the um, cam tab here and click on curves. So you've got options of either picking surfaces or edges. Um, in this case here, I'll show you, pick a, we'll, uh, pick a surface. So pick that surface there, click on that and then hit enter. And then for the, uh, the lower curve, we'll use the uh, pick edges command. And then you can just hover over one of the edges here and click, and then move over, click the next segment. And then after you've uh, clicked on two segments, it'll try to, uh, iGEMS will try to anticipate the next edge. Uh, it'll highlight it in red. And if that is what you want, just press the N for next on your uh, keyboard and continue in that manner around. And then hit enter when you get to the end. And then we can close that. So we've got those two uh, edges defined there. And now we can click on the toolpath button. And then you've got different options as far as uh, what you want to use for piercing. If you want to do a tilted pierce or a vertical pierce, you got that checkbox there. You can have default lead in, lead out lengths um, if you want. And you can also change those later. So then we just click on the plus sign here. And down here, it's telling us to select upper curve. So we click on this line here and then indicate where you want to have add your lead in for the, uh, the start. So we'll click there and then it says specify endpoint or hit enter to close. So we, we want to go all the way around this uh, edge here. So we'll just hit enter and then specify direction. Uh, so you can either go clockwise or counterclockwise around the part. So if we want to go clockwise, we hover our mouse over here. So it highlights this line in red and click. And then it's asking us to select lower curve or hit enter if you didn't want to specify a lower curve, if it was just a vertical cut. Um, so we'll hover and until this turns red and click on that. And so now it'll make those connections and we can see the uh, of the, uh, the water jet stream. And right now it's asking us for information about the, the lead-in. It's showing us that the uh, default lead-in length is half an inch. And if that's what we want, we can just drag our mouse around. It'll kind of lock into position here where it's tangential going into that cut there. And if uh, we're happy with that, hit enter. And then for the lead-outs, uh, we've got a zero lead-out here. Um, if you did want to add in or make a lead out length, you can just drag your mouse out and you'll see down here this number changes to show you what the lead out length would be. So you can just click if you did want to add a lead out in there and then it'll show you that. And you can also click into the, the um, either of these boxes, lead in or lead out, if you wanted to adjust that, either of those uh, lengths there. Uh, and then these other tabs here, the engagement tab is uh, basically used to indicate the um, amount of the cut surface that you want iGEMS to look at when it's calculating the, the feed rate. Um, so in this case here, we want to look at the um, water jet stream as it 
interfaces or engages from the tool to the lower curve that we had specified. Because uh, anything below that really doesn't matter for our edge quality. So iGEMS will look at that distance once calculating the speed. And then the other tab here that we work with a lot is this tool position. Um, so you can either specify that you've got a fixed Z motion that you don't need any Z motion. So that's what we're going to use on this part here because the top of this part is flat. We don't need the Z to move up and down. Uh, the other option is a, a variable Z. So if you had a part that had some contours in the top of the part, you'd uh, select variable Z there, but we'll just select fix Z. And we'll go ahead. So that's uh, cuts done. Then the, we can specify the um, outside vertical cut, which can just hit on the plus sign again. And then it asks us to select the upper curve, which we can click on this curve here. And then again, again specify start point. So I'll start on this corner here. So I click there. And then for the end point, again, I'll hit enter because we want to go all the way around. And then for the direction, we'll go, again, we'll go clockwise with that. So I'll click here. And then in this case, since it's a vertical, vertical cut, I don't need to specify a lower curve. I can just hit enter. And then... Now it's asking again for information about the lead in and lead outs. So right now, if this were going to do this lead in, this would be coming in basically at 90 degrees or horizontal to the part, which is probably not what we want here. So um, you can press the letter P and you'll see this red circle will uh, change its orientation. And that's representing the plane that you're adding the lead in on. So this would be how we'd want the, uh, the lead in to be in this case here. Again, we can. Um, drag our mouse out and hit enter for the lead in and then drag our mouse out and um, either hit enter if we want zero lead out or we can just click if we want a bit of a uh, lead out. So that would be lead in lead out for the vertical and then um, again for the um, speed we can uh, specify that with the engagement tab and again we're saying with fix Z on the other tool position and we'll just say close to that. So now it shows us both of those cuts and you got this little box up here, tool up here you can use if you want to spin around and look at things uh, from different angles. So that looks good. Click on the part icon and this will bring you back into the, uh, the main iGEM screen. And then from here you can set your zero, 00 point on the part. And then you can click on the process button and you can do a 3D simulation. And that'll open up in this window here and click on start. <clears throat> so this is your opportunity to look and make sure that the cutting head is making the motions that you expect it to make. And over here, of course, shows your line of code. You can pause it anytime. If you want to go back in the program a bit, you can just click on, uh, click on a line and then continue on. You can change your speed here with the speed button. That all looks good. Then you can go ahead and create your code and cut it. So that's that part. And if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks.